Hello, and welcome back to the bench. Today, we are going to be talking about this Evanard Power Pilot controller. So, Ricky sent me an email asking about a problem he's having. He basically bought a boat, and it didn't come with a key for his Power Pilot controller. And he asked about putting the newer style ignition switch into this controller, which is a good idea. If you are unfamiliar, this would be a 73 series controller key. A 73 series replacement ignition switch with key is 90 bucks. So that's that's pretty expensive. However, a newer style ignition switch is like 25 bucks. So this this is something you would want to install instead of the older style. Uh, the question is, can you do it? This key, you would just turn and start. You didn't have to push it into choke like this one has. Instead, you have this choke switch right here that's just kind of a choke. I don't know, it might be more desirable to to some to have the switch or the push button. I don't know, either way, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, recently, as in years ago, I made a video talking about a key set for this. Should you have this problem, you just buy a key set, try all the keys until you find the one that fits and go about your merry way. However, the problem with this controller is there's 34 different keys, each one is 11 bucks. So you're not going to buy a whole set of them, if you can find them, just to see which one works. Now, there is a locksmith on eBay who makes a, uh, a set available for everybody with all of the keys. It's $70. So, 70 bucks for a set of keys to find the key that'll fit the switch. If the switch is any good, cool. If it's not, you would have been better off just spending $20 more on a new ignition switch which, honestly, if you're going to do it, might be a better option. Now, if you've got a pile of these control boxes sitting around with no keys, buy the set, of course. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to see if we can install this newer style ignition switch into this older style controller. I'm going to lean towards yes, but you never know. Uh, the thing right now is currently seized up. The, you can't really rotate this handle very far. I'm hoping that's because of what remains of these cables, but I don't really know. I've never had the same part. And I can see a bunch of dirt and leaves and stuff inside of there, so we'll be cleaning this thing up as we go. I'm sure it works. It's probably just stuck out. We'll figure it out. Well, to begin here, in the back we have what's left of some old uh, mountings hardware. It's it's a little rusty. You know what? It might come out, actually. Yeah, that'll come out. Never mind. This one, yeah, it's stuck. So I'm going to get a universal wrench and take that out. Well, my universal wrench got that right off of there. Uh, we got some Phillips here to remove the lower cover to get to the cables. Uh, I was sick and tired of trying to have to hunt down screwdrivers all the time. Because, you know, I have my one go-to huge flathead that I use for everything. And anything past that, it's kind of hard to find, so it splurged a little bit. But a new screwdriver set. The plan is to throw away all my old weird ones that are currently piling up my drawer. Now, why Huskies, you may ask? Well, when you stroll into Home Depot, say, hey, I, uh, you know, you got a lighter one, of course. You don't want to say you're using it as a pry bar and broke it. You know, I was removing a uh, slightly damaged screw and the tip just fell off. Yeah, hey, go get another one. They don't really care. You know, you go over to Lowe's, they're like, well, I mean, you're going to have to call the manufacturer. So they give you some runaround, some fake number. You call up whatever company it is and say, hey, I need a new one. And they say, well, what, why didn't you just return to the store? And then you say, well, the store said to call you. And then you got to take it back to the store. And then they throw another fit about it. It's just a nightmare. I really just don't like Lowe's. I mean, and obviously Sears is gone, so that's out. All right, so we got this open. A couple of bonus screws. Those probably fell out when I uh, you know, cut the nuts off. And so far, looks old but pretty basic. All right, just had a bunch of stuff. It wasn't recording. Typical. So these top little fabric covery padding things, they, they kind of fall apart. This one, as bad as it looks, is actually in pretty good shape, considering most of them that are out there. Looks like just a piece of foam for the leather. Get this case opened. Nothing 
to it, right? And there we have our cables and shifts. I don't know, I'm kind of thinking it's the cable. Cable. Stuck in there, that's what was preventing it from moving. The shift detent in this thing is pretty strong. Put our set screw back in. Set screw attaches to that the cable end here. Just kind of slides in. Pretty easy to change them. Maybe I'll do a video on changing the cables. I think I have some new with these older ones, so that'll be handy. But anyway, so we got the controller open. Looks like we got a buzzer, which is good. This is what we're after. Pop that off. Alright, so pretty basic little uh, switch and pretty basic mission. And yeah, that'll work. The key is going to be sideways. But who really cares, am I right? Let's see if we can reuse this tan one. Make things look good, you know what I mean? Yep, I think uh, I think this will work just fine. Yeah. So this is pretty interesting. We have a gray wire here. Gray wire is for the tack signal. The problem is there's no plug or anything here to use the tack signal, so it's kind of useless. But it is there, so I mean you could still get a tack signal. Maybe just run it at the bottom here or something. I don't know. But possible. All right, now here's my problem with this controller. The original plug here, somebody hacked out the black and yellow wire and tapped in this place, which is fine for a, a rigging. I mean, it'll work fine. There's no problem to it. It's just thing is it's not quite how it's supposed to be. And as much as I uh, like wiring and rigging, I don't like wiring and rigging on the outside like that. So I'm going to replace the entire harness. Most people aren't going to have to do this, but I am. It's going to be a little challenging. I'll confine spaces in my fat fingers, but uh, it'll be fine. Let me go find another cable off of my junkie controller, swap it out, and we'll make this thing work again. Needed a little bit more room to be able to get in here. I didn't need it, I just wanted it. Let's be honest here, you yeah. uh, know. Where'd my little flathead go? Here it is. So this is the new neutral safety switch so to make sure it's in neutral before it sends power to the starter solenoid pretty uh, pretty standard doesn't look like anything's really wrong with it uh, detent ball fell out when I remove that top piece that's gonna be an issue Alright, so, get that out of my way. So, neutral start safety switch runs over to here, you know, piece of cake. <sighs> You know, it's really not much more to it to just rip the whole thing apart and clean it. Might as well just do that, huh? Alright. Ground wire. Pretty shared. It's back cable clamp. Remember that in a second. All right, so there's the electronics removed from our uh, housing. We we'll have to redo all of that in a second. Yeah, 
I should check for holes in this thing first. Yep, a little crack right there. I'm glad I checked. This card cleaner here, it's old nasty stuff. I'm really on the verge of throwing it away anyway. That's why I don't mind dumping it into here. It's still clean at all. Anybody need a pinion gear? <laughs> I don't know how long that's been in there. So, the handle itself, I'm not going to dump in my little bath. Uh, this thing is pretty nasty. I don't see anything on here that's going to be affected by this stuff, so let's go in there too. Uh, this isn't bad. The other side's pretty dirty, but the inside's not bad. So, let's go ahead and soak it too. This stuff is actually working great. Like the uh, plastic little cable casings. These are already looking all shiny. All agitated every now and then. I really want to find a lid for this thing. That's what I want to do. Alright, well, stuff has been in there for a while, so I'm going to take it out. I got a bucket of water here on the floor, so I'm just going to rinse it off in the bucket. And then. Take the parts and stick them outside to dry. Alright, well, the parts are getting a sun bath, so while that happens, I will prep my replacement wiring harness here. Uh, this is a boat specific wiring harness that is why it has that end on it. I'll show you the other end. Hold on. It's like 20 feet of cable here. And the other end, so pretty pretty standard. So cut that what we call the Molex connector off. Get our wiring harness. Now I have two options here. I can splice it in right here like they did or I can just trim off that much of the sleeving and have the yellow wire run all the way to there. I don't know if I feel like doing that honestly. I When I first uh, got this I was like yeah I'll just do that. But now, now that I look at it I don't really know if I want to. Uh, that makes sense. So I'm going to cut about that much off. Maybe a little more so I'll have about that much wiring. good. That's what I'm left with. Black with yellow, gray, tan, purple with white, solid purple, yellow, red with purple, and black. Perfect. Alright, I need to cut the zip tie off. somewhere. Now my wire might be a little thicker, which might be a little bit of a problem. 
me see what I can do. I'm sure this is how the factory does it too. This thing is burning hot. Surprisingly, it gets that warm out in the sun. Now there's still grease under this. I'm kind of debating to myself if I want to open it up and re-grease it. We might as well, huh? And I got the new screwdrivers for a reason. Now there is torque settings for these. Pretty much everything we're taking apart. We are supposed to follow it. So please keep that in mind for what I'm doing. Because I don't think you're going to see a torque wrench in this video. Alright. Got some white lithium here. Going to put it in places. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how that was. Okay, maybe not. Right as it comes out, it needs to make a 90. Like, right as it comes out. So, I can't do that because of where I put it. So let's go ahead and try that again. Now I want to make this wiring harness as close as I can to factory. So it comes in, it makes its turn, the gray and the tan exit the loom, which is what I have here. And then we have a small piece of heat shrink tubing, which I have right there. So I'll, that should be about it. So I will apply that and shrink it down. I'd say that would do it. We got a screw right there, so I think it needs to bend up and go around the screw. So that would probably work right there. Let me get my heat gun. Just so you know, I actually did go use my heat gun. All right, we're getting close. Getting close. Uh, let's do the yellow wire first, the yellow with red stripe. It's going to connect over here to our neutral start safety switch. All right. This won't be bad, it's just how I want to do it is going to be the challenging part. I'll be back. All right, I made myself a new safety switch harness right there. The plan is now to get these terminals off the old one. And I broke it. Okay, the switch has been expertly repaired. So let's go ahead and put it back in this little spot here. went down through here through there this little ring terminal is going to go to the switch and this one is going to get spliced let's call it right there So 
So the purple wire is going to be probably the hardest. It branches off kind of everywhere. For the most part, everything else just kind of gets hooked up. So, yeah, I guess uh, maybe we'll do the tan, get it mounted where it goes, now our horn here, and then we'll come back and do the purple. So, one goes there, tan wire doesn't need to be very long, we'll call about that, give it a little extra just cause, a little cutty cut, luckily I have a whole bunch of these terminals, and these are standard quarter inch terminals, but they, the factory ones here are used to a, uh, I think they're called 90 degrees or flags. I don't have any of those, but I have plenty of straight quarter inch terminals. So I'm using the straight quarter inch terminals. Because they'll work fine. A little piece of protectant on it. Get the heat done out. Purple wire comes out of our harness, goes to our switch, branches off, and continues over to our ignition switch. I already made the terminal to jump from our choke switch to our ignition switch. This wire is. And then I need a larger terminal that I can crimp two wires into to make that little jump. And naturally, you need different crimpers for this. You know, you probably don't need them, honestly. You could probably just use the uh, normal ones. Just kind of force the two wires in there. So I kind of messed that up. Get that wire back in there now. So the purple with white stripe comes out of the harness and goes straight to the plug. Pretty, pretty simple there. All right, so as I said, purple wire simply just goes over to, purple with white stripe, excuse me, simply just goes over to the choke switch, give ourselves a little bit extra. And we'll just cut it there and crimp on a little quarter inch terminal. Both if I strip the wire. Aha! Kidding! Our switch has a built-in push-to-choke option. I vote we might as well use it. But we don't want a hole where our switch was, so I'm going to put on another one of these double terminals to jump it. Where my crimpers go? I mean, the switch has it. Might as well, right? I, uh, I don't think I've ever actually used one of these power pilots for long periods of time. I don't know if the uh, choke switch is better than the push to choke now that I think about it. So, I don't know. We'll have both, I guess. So the feed for the warning horn is actually just a little jumper wire. It comes off our switch here. See, that's all that is. I could uh, remake it, but I don't really see a reason to. So those will kind of join together, both back to back like that. Alright, now the other one 
is our black wire, which ground down right there, grounds down the same way, just a little jumper wire. So I'll pop that off. Then we'll reinstall our cable clamp slash ground wire. Back where we got it from over here. So that'll connect up. Now the only thing we have left are these three wires. The red with blue purple stripe, black, and black with yellow. So I need to find three more of those little ring terminals and some of the small heat shrink tubing. Well, that is it. Now, it's a simple matter of hooking up the switch. If you're going to buy a switch, you need to keep in mind that it doesn't come with these screws in the back. For whatever reason, I have some in this switch, so... This wasn't a new switch. I, I used it for something. And then it was, since it was, you know, brand new and was done using it, I saved it. So, that's why I still have a bunch of screws in the back. Since I don't want to use those old brass screws, I'm just going to use these. But anyway, so the point of an Evernerd switch is it comes with a diagram on the back to tell you exactly where everything goes. If you buy a Sierra, it's not going to really match up. All these little terminals, they're going to be doing things other than what you want. So if you're going to be re replacing a switch, buy an Evernerd switch. There is the part number as well as a link below. So now what we do is just hook everything up. So, we can follow our little dotted lines. So black with yellow is the uh, center one here. So we've got our black with yellow coming off our harness. And most of the time, you run out of room. So I'm going to make this go up. There's probably plenty of room in this thing, but I'm going to make it go up anyway. Maybe I will. Hold on. Yeah, I'll make it go up, make life easy. Everything else, I think, will be kind of coming down. Working our way around, yellow with red. It's the one right above the stop switch. So with these two, yellow with red goes there. That would be our starter wire, which I guess we'll do that one next because it's going to block this terminal. This one is the purple with white primer or choke. If you weren't adding one, if you, if you didn't do what I just did here, you wouldn't have this wire. You would just skip this part. But since I kind of branched it off so I could retain the use of the push to choke, I have to do this. But again, if you're, if you're just putting one of these switches in this controller, you won't have the purple with white stripe. Alright, so purple with white stripe is in. Now we'll come back and do the yellow thread. That, I'm not going to have that one coming up. I'm going to have that coming off to the side, I think. Also, I'm pretty sure it was a uh, white wire that I pulled out of here. So the neutral start safety switch goes over here and connects to the start. Well, okay. The red wire is our power wire. It goes into the switch. When you hit start, it sends the, you know, the power signal over to the, to the yellow, now yellow with red stripe. goes through. If we're neutral, circuit continues, go back through, and goes back through our harness. So it doesn't really matter what color this is. If you have the uh, yellow with red stripe, or if yours was kind of a white color with mine, just know that, that wire going over to the switch was your uh, start circuit and it needs to go right here for the yellow thread. Even on our box here it says yellow thread start circuit. So if you for, uh, forget anything and you know what goes where it's clearly labeled there on the back of our package. All right black with yellow and 
purple switch battery positive. It's our next one. Now this is going to have two wires coming into it. One for the horn, or the warning horn, overheat alarm, whatever you want to call it. And one coming off the uh, choke switch there. Alright, next would be black. That one's pretty easy, but again, we have two. One grounding into the controller over there. And one coming through our harness. Last one, there's red with purple stripe. So now we just put it back together basically. I'm going to use the metal ring that I took off the switch here because it seems a little stronger. Give it a nice vintage look too. Now with any luck, this little bundle will still fit back in here. But it is a little tight. It takes some finessing. All these new terminal ends I put on here, they're all going, you know, nice and straight. No little pre-bends like what I took off. No big deal. Just going to force it in. We'll need to go get a switch. A little screw there. But, looks good so far, I'd say. See right here, that was touching that. That is going to be a problem. Need more room there. Now we should have a rubber boot for the switch, but I don't. But that'll work for now. All right, let's grease up this bushing down here just a little bit. It'll make its way around. Actually, we should put it under the bushing too, huh? Yeah. All right, we're going to have a detent ball. Do we want that detent ball to slide okay? So we need to grease the little grooves back here just a bit. Get this back in, matching up with the gears here. Alright, detent ball. Neutral. So that's forward, neutral. Um, I don't know, it's around there somewhere. Who cares? 
So detent ball is in. This is going to be a nightmare. I already know it. get the screw in. So This is good and dry. More pushing. Excess grease by the outside of the bushing. Need some grease inside the groove. Alright. Should probably pull this old cable out. I'm gonna find that little Allen wrench. So that's loosened, so then our cable will pull out. That loose ish. Um, I could pull that screw out and grease it. I don't think I need to, but just for the viewer's sake, I will. There eh, might be some moisture in there anyway. Be about ready to install this now. I'll put some grease on the lip here. So this ball needs to fit into that slot down there. Uh, before I do that though, the tan wire here was originally had a, a little piece of heat shrink tubing on it. I guess I might as well do that too. All right, let's put our cable casing in. And we will just wait, yeah, I'll wait. All right, now I'm gonna get even with the bench and kind of look down as I slide this together. There we go, there we go. So the ball, the little thing in there is aligned. So now it's a matter of lining everything else up. It's got all these little studs. Everything's got to fit down over. Nice, good, tight fit. Let's put this back in. If it stays put. All right. Now, I didn't clean this up. I should have put it in a little bath too. But I'll, I'll just wipe it down. Okay, good enough. So, since I didn't install cables, now, that's my screw bent. Yep, sure enough, screw's bent. Well, that's fun. But, luckily, that's, that's just a screw, that's easy. So, it feels like we have pretty smooth operation here.
Yep, we got some new screws, just put them in. So that finishes that off. All right, got the handle cleaned up. Got most of the old grease out of there. Uh, there was still some grease down around in there. I'm uh, not entirely convinced why. Oh, I guess for the... All right, I'll grease it up again. All right, it's back together. Nice controller again, huh? Uh, let's go hook it up, see what happens. All right, so key on, nothing, good. Uh, let's hit the choke knob. You hear the plunger hitting, and then key push in, plunger hits, so choke's working, starts working, all in all, good controller I'd say. Oh, you know what, let's, let's check the warning horn. So I unplug the tan wire here, and then ground it out somewhere. That's working. Well, I'd say mission accomplished. Now, honestly, that actually is a very, very easy controller to work on. It's a lot easier than the, uh, the newer ones here, you know, the one that's currently screwed to this stand. Uh, it's easy to work on. It's easy to get stuff. You know, it's, it really is a little pleasurable controller to repair. That was, that was quite easy. You know, borderline enjoyable. And say what you want about five-year-old, well-abused carburetor cleaner. It did a fantastic job cleaning out the inside of this thing. Uh, if you're going to do this, um, chances are not going to need to rewire it like I did. I think you could probably cut the zip tie, push the wire in just, just a little bit, and put a new zip tie on it. That should give you enough room to not have to mess with the, uh, the length of the purple wire. Should do it. I'm not sure. I have another one of these. Not... Not quite as nice as this one, a little junkier, the top's all chewed up, but anyway. I think I'm going to uh, try it without rewiring it again in the future just to make sure it's going to work. If it doesn't, I'll probably, I don't know, delete this video and upload that one maybe. Because, you know, if I'm uploading wrong information, I want it gone. So anyway, so far it's a working theory. The switch will fit inside the controller, it will fit inside the slots, and the wiring will all connect the same. But it's all going to be a different order from the original switch. But the wire colors are still the same. Use the back of the Evinrude switch package and connect the you know, proper color wires to the proper terminals on your new switch and you won't have any problems. Unless the wires are too short. To gain function of, you know, key in to choke, you're gonna need to need to add the little wire in there like I did. But if you don't care about that and just want a new switch, perfectly viable option in my opinion. And cheaper and better. That's you know, what that's the way to go, really. Now, here's the other thing. If you're installing one of these switches and you don't want this, it is extremely easy to add a little power trim and tilt switch back here. That's probably a good idea. Maybe I'll do that in the future. If you want to see that or think that might be helpful, there's a little comment area down there somewhere. Just go ahead and uh, let me know that that sounds interesting to you. Well, I'll call this a win. Well, Ricky, thank you for finally giving me a reason to do something with the controller. Everybody else, I hope you found this video helpful. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, see y'all later. Ow, did I forget to put that back in? <laughs>